If this was a Salamandrian video, this would probably be titled, Let's Talk About Fuel, Yo. Well, that sounds like an old reference. What the hell? Man, time flies. Let's talk about the brushless fuel system that I have in and feeding that monster right there. This is the oil system. I was supposed to have a power steering pump here. There is just no room with all these 12 and lines. On top of that, I was supposed to have the fuel system right here, a mechanical fuel pump. No, 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 we're not doing mechanical fuel pumps. I love the fact that I have this nasty alternator on this car right here. The alternator is 275 amps, 260 amps, it doesn't matter, it's a lot of amps. And if it's already upgraded, why not utilize my area of expertise, electronics? Here it is, this is the center of one of the most bonerific things that I've ever seen in my life. But this is a Holly solution utilizing brushless fuel pumps. This is, guys, this is just nasty. This is the future. This is their VR2 setup. One of the biggest components to that setup is this right here. Really? Yeah, really. There are two of those. Each of those control the pumps. Because one of the biggest problems with this level of fuel delivery is fuel temperature. If you heat fuel up, fuel will vapor lock. It turns into vapor. The only experience I have with temperature and pressure of a liquid is coolant and you want pressure so that way it raises the boiling point. Well, for fuel, that's a slightly different case. When you get this up to about 160 or so plus Fahrenheit, your fuel can vapor lock. It turns into vapor and then, oh, that's wonderful. That's exactly what you want going into your engine. No, you don't. Normally brushless pumps are just all out, all out on off away you go. This system has staging. Both pumps can be staged, lows, highs, and you can see the flow rates for that. All together, at max full tilt, uh, at low PSI, at low PSI, this thing's close to five gallons per minute. Well, I'm a turbocharger guy through and through. Like, I, I bleed turbo noises. <laughs> when I sneeze, it sounds like a blow-off valve. Superchargers come back to haunt me always. Right here's no exception. If you look inside of the brushless pumps, the brushless part actually has to do with the electronic part, not this that I'm showing you. This is twin screw, sick looking excavator. I don't know. I don't even know what the right words would be for that. Compact way of supercharging your fuel into your engine. That's such a bad ex example, but I'm keeping it in the video. The brushless part has to do more with the electric motor that requires a controller because in, no longer are there two brushes on the side and contacting and the centerpiece rotates it's electronically controlled so they're firing off they're part of the rotating assembly it's really fascinating if you get a chance and want to blow your own mind look up brushed versus brushless motors beefy deutsch connectors even this whatever this is the i'm sure it's resistant it's resistant to something <laughs> that is nice they include a fuse on it. How many, what is this? It is a 30 amp. That's for one pump, of course. Max expects 60 amp, but one for each of the pumps. Away we go. Real clean, adjustable. I think it's like seven inches down to 11 and a half for various depths of fuel cells. Also on the top, there is a fuel cap here. It'll fit a line in there instead of just this cap. Okay, well, it is slightly smaller than a 20 AN line, 10 AN in, and then this is an 8 AN return line. And what's really interesting, and I thought this was advanced engineering, is look at that. It does have a little nipple that you can control this how you see fit. What I'm gonna do between this and the next video is get a 12 point fuel cell, a little baby one. I'm talking like two, three gallons. So right in this area, I'm gonna put a little baby fuel cell and that the ultimate fuel cell will go in this whole section, some sort of saddlebag setup. Might as well start there and then use the correct system in its correct spot. So I get the wiring and all that to the correct length. It's meant to party and I need a system that can party. And I was teasing this before, that's why this high flow fuel pressure regulator matters so much because I am going to be kicking fuel in and out, especially at idle. One of the pieces of magic is that I'm gonna have to have the ECU control hey, here's when the stages go on and off. Because that is not something that you normally do with a car. You, don't, you just turn the fuel system on and that's it. Now we're gonna have to deal with phases. That is a complexity we have to worry about because that changes the amount of fuel flow, pressure, so on. But we can run E85 and make as much power as we want. That is just insane. When the massive four pump setup that I had, that was uh, horrible by the way, on the three rotor, was only just shy of two, but wait, there's more. Rob, I bet you get a lot of questions on uh, how much 
How much power do they consume? Because, you know, those pumps have to be high power. <laughs> no, those two pumps at full tilt, absolute peak operation, because they're brushless, 38 amps. That's amazing. That is really, I, I don't, I, I, I'm in a good mood. I'm in a good mood because of Holly's setup. This is genuinely the stuff I geek out on. Oh my God. There is the molested intake manifold that I uh, violated. That's actually my weld. Uh, make fun of it or not, I don't care. Either way, you can see a real quick clip of me making that happen. There is one little baby weld. There's, there's a hint of technique there. I'm very happy with that. Clearly the holes tripped me up. I just, I didn't know what to do and I kind of freaked out. This part was sticking out higher than that so I had to melt the edge of it. As a trader, I have the LS throttle body as part of this solution. Okay, this has the idle air control, which we may use, as well as the TPS. And sure enough, oh, that looks so sick, I'm not gonna lie. You guys know my obsession with billet. Sexy, also made by Holly. If you guys are seeing a theme here, you, you, can, you can feel it. You can feel it, my bones. The other part of it is this right here. I have in a row eight fuel injectors. So these two are primaries, these two are primaries. Those, I'm just gonna steal the proper cleaned up injectors from the three rotor. I bought one of each more, a primary and a secondary. There you guys are. Get a little baggie of <laughs> used injectors here. I got all the correct O-rings and everything. Those are 1050 primaries. Those will go in the primary spots. And then the 1700s will go in the outer spots. I got one of each on its way from Elliot from Turbolone, so thank you. Those will be completed. But Slim, what if you win? Wouldn't it be weird? <laughs> I got a second row of fuel injectors to deal with. Another solution. <laughs> Look at this. Of course, these are also billet. These are dummy injectors. They do nothing other than block off everything that we all hold dear. Elliot from Turblone actually found them for me. And that's all they are. They're just a chunk of aluminum with two O-rings. And we are going to put those on there like that. Ta-da! At this point, what I'm kind of waiting for, and I know Paul Yall isn't going to watch this video, or Tony... Hilo, I think your name is. The guy's from Injector Dynamics. Funny thing is the owner of Injector Dynamics is an old RX-7 guy. I used to read all of his stuff and absorb it when I was younger. Anyway, they're coming out with a 2550cc injector based off of a Bosch one. And I'm gonna hold out until those are released, who knows, probably SEMA or so, to really dump in the fuel. Keeping costs low, I'm gonna use these and these and keep the fuel system at a minimum. I'm, I, you know what that means. I'm not gonna be making power until I get the bigger injectors. These, uh, sadly, have a zero, <laughs> zero flow rate. Other fuel rail goes on. We'll run the fuel to the rail. I'm gonna switch to the GoPro and put this onto the engine to get a more clear idea of where things are gonna line up with everything else. Huge thanks to Max Flower. He's uh, Mad Max 26 b Turbo on Instagram. Max saved my ass by saying, hey Rob, by the way, uh, there's your oil pressure regulator right there. This is capable of adjusting the pressure properly. You don't need to use the stock system. So I am going to block this off. It, it changes my plans with temperature and pressure sensors. That's okay. Rear iron still gets the bearing oil. The rest of the system blocked off. Quite frankly, that's one of the best benefits of making these daily videos is people are watching these things going, uh, Rob, uh, I've done that before. Here's an easier way. Tomorrow I'm gonna go pick up all the correct spacers for this. And Nader has already planned for it that these will sit in ways that do not interfere with the throttle, like this. So we'll put, it, we'll put that one there because that's the important position. You're coming with me. Oh, that's heavy. Oh my God, that's steel. Never realized that. Ooh, that is impressive right there. This whole thing picks up, so that'll be better. That puts this, I guess, what, can we do it this way too? Will that work? Uh, that's gonna be tight. These are easy, but those are gonna hit. We can get this plate lower, 
because of these stoppers right there to make room for those notches. This was my best solution to just drill a bunch of holes. This is just oddly satisfying. Watch this, watch this, watch this. <laughs> oh, it's like pulling teeth when they're supposed to come out. It looks like my hair in the morning and evening and midday. Well, that turned out way better than I expected. They're sitting flush on the engine, or at least on the, uh, the housings, and they've got just enough clearance. That might help with this considerably. I think there's still some room for improvement. Just a little bit, yeah. Let's pull this to here. Yeah, they, it clears. We could shift them, because of my intake, I, we could shift them and get that right. Like, look at that. It, it goes way back there, and you can actually reach it from this side. So on this, this is aluminum, aluminum. That's not gonna do me any good because I don't have any of the screws. This is so in anticipation of boost that there is support on the inside for the road. I only get one shot at it before you guys uh, make fun of me when I blow it and think I'm completely incompetent. Looking sexual. This moment, I am ready for. I've been waiting for this moment all my life. I am never going to sing. Did you guys know I was friends with a couple girls that did all the auto shows? You know, you know, all the people that work for Ford, Chevy, GM as a product specialist. And one of the girls was like, oh, you, you know, it came up that, oh, I wish I could sing. And she's like, everybody can sing. And I'm like, really? She goes, yeah, here, you test it. She was, she was a professional singer, like cruise ship type, you know, entertainer. And uh, <laughs> I gave it my all, guys. I gave it my all and started singing. And she goes, oh yeah, no, you can't. I still think about that, like in cold sweats when I'm just laying in bed, I'm like, I, not only can I not sing, I can't get better. I'm, she just shot my dreams down completely. Yeah. Oh, 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 you guys get a better view than I do. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. That's just sick. Oh, man, this thing is just taking on a form of its own. It's gonna be weird seeing all this because you're gonna have like a core engine hidden underneath all this. Well, let's keep building, right? I don't think you guys will object to that. Something you'll notice is that coolant goes in, spins around, and then comes back out. Well, where's the hottest spot gonna be? Heat up, heat up, heat up, heat up, hottest. These two rotors, these two irons, these two everything are gonna be hotter than the front ones and that affects everything. Yes. That's billet, by the way. One more time, one more time. Oh my God. Temp sensor, I'll probably move that closer to the center. Uh, to get more, <laughs> obviously, for more centered reading. Steering's gotta come through here, ruin the party. This gets blocked off. Spark plug wires and coils all up in this. Steering better not mess with this part. I think the steering rack does come, it comes over wider here and then comes to over here. So that's probably fine. I'm missing a couple small pieces. This is like a 12 mil to six an, 12 mil to six an, 12 mil to six an. So we have all of the irons fed looking like this. Full function's got their kit coming in to block this off and get the proper wheel for here. I'm picking up a 3D printed pulley for this spot. That way they all have the same ribbed pulley system. I've got the one here that I have to hone out because this is such a tall nut. And that is also gonna cut this, another part of this piece. So this moves in that much. Look at, I, I gave him bad information. That needs to be a half an inch further. Oh my God, this is happening. Oh, <laughs> oh, my knees are getting weak. So all the electronics are here. Battery will sit down there. Probably small fuel cell down here with all the new fuel pumps. Electronics, plug in the ECU, plug in all the sensors, injectors. I need to make the ignition coil tomorrow. I bought a high powered starter, which is one of the later model RX-8 starters, but then the, uh, Chris Sanders from Bonsai wraps it into a, well, turbo two based starter. So that's two kilowatt, something like that versus the 1.3, 1.8.
Uh, so a little bit more juice. Let's hope that's enough to turn this motor over. <laughs> it's all going on all at once. I'm doing everybody a disservice by not putting this on here. You guys can go like that. They seem a little taller than they should be. Oh, that might screw me. I might have to hone these out. No! They'll work, but they're a little tall because they're hitting out here. If I have time, I'm gonna have uh, somebody with a lathe pull them down a little bit. This is again where Earl's slash Holly just rocks it. This is a 150 degree angle piece. I've got another one coming in here. So they're not just, they're more managed. And then here's the 180 pieces and that's actually working even better than I was expecting. One for there, one for here. Both lines go back. There's gonna be you know, a Y piece that sends it. I'm assuming I'm gonna send it to these two because they're nice and linear. And then these two will probably go to the, that massive regulator. And just like that, it begins to look real. I got the other fitting right there. I'm gonna try and keep them nice and compact, keep all the fuel in its safe zone, kind of a fuel safe zone. Don't need it playing with this or any of the things in this area. This uh, is a 10 to two tens setup. I'm, I'm gonna get two like 30s. 30 degree angles so they come out straight like this. This is kind of a hint of how it'll be. That one will be blocked off, that won't exist. This will, one of six, now one of five units go to something like right here near the tank that is the feed into the entire motor. It's just gnarly. As you guys know, I love just ending my videos. I tend to forget to film an outro, but in this one, it is important that I mention this. I posted on Instagram ranting a little bit just about some of the people upset that I'm making daily videos. Oh my God, just don't watch. That's really easy. I, nobody's forcing you to, and if it's so bad, geez, you know what to do. For everybody else, the several hundred thousand of you, you guys are watching almost the entire video. It's amazing. And so I'm gonna continue doing this, and it's it's, something where I'm proud of this. I'm documenting what I'm doing and this is so wild. And I know you guys get to feel that spirit too. While I may physically be alone during these monumentous, amazing moments, I'm, I might be looking at camera right now, but I'm sharing this moment with you guys. So thank you so much.